It would be easy to forget some of the economic data, but it was actually pretty important. Let's talk about the numbers. Let's talk about the action in the bond market with Kathy Jones joining me, Chief Fixed Income Strategist at the Schwab Center for Financial Research. Kathy, great to see you on a Friday. Good to see you, Oliver. Uh, this was a pretty good week for the economy, right? Uh, GDP came in above expectations. Inflation kind of hit where we wanted to. Sentiment wasn't too bad. Uh, is that fair? Yeah, I would say so. Um, you know, we're not in a recessionary environment, but we're not overheating. And that's uh, just where everyone wants it to be. I think one of the, the best pieces of information was kind of buried in the GDP report, we saw a lot of the increase in GDP was driven by business investment um, and in software and in structures. And I think that that's a lot of the build out for AI and, and due to the CHIPS Act, et cetera. But what that implies is we're, we could get some good productivity gains and we've had a good run of increased productivity. If we continue to get that, that means the economy can grow at a healthy pace without generating inflation. And that's kind of good for everybody. Mm, uh, kind of the ideal of what we want. Uh, so at the same time, the fact that we're not slowing down at a faster rate than expected means that we're September at the earliest for cuts. Does that mean we should expect to hear from Powell, you know, in August to lay the groundwork for that? Yeah, I mean, we have a Fed meeting coming up next week. We don't expect a rate cut. There are some people calling for a rate cut at this meeting, but I think that that's probably overly aggressive. Uh, the Fed likes to take it, has liked to take its time in this cycle. I, I don't um, see why they wouldn't wait for an, another data point or two. They've waited this long. They might as well wait a little bit longer. But I do think that Powell will probably indicate that the confidence in hitting the inflation goal is growing and that will open the door to cutting rates. Uh, wait for Jackson Hole, maybe a stronger signal if everything goes well, meaning inflation continues to come down and the labor market continues to cool off. And then a rate cut in September seems the most likely scenario to us. OK, uh, the inflation numbers today, a good combination of uh, income and uh, uh, spending seems like we're on the right track still. Can we kind of project that out caught with confidence? Well, in this cycle, it's been hard to project out with confidence, right? We've had so many ups and downs and so many swings from one end to the other. But I, I, what I keep an eye on, obviously, the inflation data, that core PCE coming in at just 0.2 percent. And actually, that's a rounding thing. You know, if you want to take it out three decimal points, it was it was a pretty close to 0.1. But the point of that is, is that the three month rate of change is now down to about 2.1%. So we're already at 2.6 year over year. That's below where the Fed had projected. We'd be at the end of the year, they projected 2.8. So they're already beating their target. Three month rate of change is very, very close to the 2% target. So that's all good news on the inflation side. On the growth and spending side, income and spending side, you know, they were pretty decent numbers, but didn't really surprise us one way or another too much. So that's good news as well. It really does look like we're in the midst of this soft landing. Whether it continues or not is, is a big question, but right now it looks good for the soft landing. All right. Um, yield curve uninversion. Uh, welcome as we're getting there, Kathy, or is that kind of the sign that uh, we do really slow down cuts necessary to prevent things from getting worse? Yeah, it's really important whether um, the rate cuts are driven by a weak economy or good inflation. And so, um, you know, I think that if if we start to see real softness in the economic data, particularly the the unemployment rate goes up, then it's not such great news because it signals a weaker economy. It means obviously the Fed's going to cut and maybe cut more aggressively than anticipated, but it's not great news for the economy. If though it's the rate cuts are driven by the fact that inflation just continues to fall and there's no signs of inflation reigniting on the horizon, then that's the good news scenario. And I imagine we'll flip between one interpretation and another several times over the next couple of months. Okay. All right. Uh, as far as the uh, uh, corporate bond market goes, the rotation we're seeing in stocks showing up there a little bit. I think last time we talked, it wasn't quite as dramatic, but 
a definite repricing of lower quality stuff? Yeah, you know, spreads uh, in the corporate market are very tight, but we are seeing more dispersion between the lower end and the upper end of the corporate bond market, which is to be expected um, as you play out the cycle, particularly if you go into a softening cycle. So that's where we'd be increasingly cautious, given where spreads are, increasingly cautious about going down the credit spectrum. Okay. Kathy, thanks uh, for the talk. Uh, Great stuff. Good things for us to think about going into uh, more economic data next week. Appreciate it.